Hey everyone, it's Mr. Veve. This lesson is about movement of energy in an ecosystem. So let's get right to it with your first key concept here. Food chains and food webs model the flow of energy in an ecosystem. We're going to look at both of those during this lesson. So there's a little example of a food uh, chain right there and showing a lot of uh, different uh, organisms there from grass to mice and all the way up to hawks and lions. So let's see if we can identify some of the creatures that uh, make up different food chains. So first you have your autotrophs, which are your producers. These are the organisms that make their own food. So there's two main types of autotrophs that we have to understand. The first is photosynthetic, and these are the ones that use sunlight to make food. Uh, these are your plants. This is what you're very used to seeing as far as uh, the green stuff that makes uh, food from light. The next is something you may not be familiar with. This is called chemosynthetic, and chemo means chemicals. So these are uh, autotrophs that use chemicals to make their own food, and these usually live around these hydrothermal vents at the bottom of the ocean where there's no sunlight. So that's a way they can make their food. They use some of those chemicals in there. So after autotrophs, we have heterotrophs. And these are your consumers. They have to eat other organisms in order to get their energy. There are four main types of these. There's your herbivores, which only eat plants. Then you have omnivores that eat both plants and meat, so like bears right there. You also have carnivores, which eat only meat. And you have detritivores, which that's the stuff that they, eats, eats dead stuff. So snails and earthworms, millipedes, and even crabs. So that's the one that most people don't really remember very often, but I'm sure the other three you're pretty familiar with. Uh, the next type of uh, uh, organism we have are called decomposers. These are organisms that break down dead or decaying organisms. And the examples here, we have some bacteria, some fungi, uh, insects, and even certain types of snails. So these would be decomposers. Uh, they only break down the stuff that's dead or decaying already. So what is a food chain? So a food chain is a sequence of uh, who eats whom in an ecosystem. So if you follow the, the arrows around here, the grasshopper eats the plant. Grasshopper gets eaten by the bird, which gets eaten by the snake, which gets eaten by the owl. So that's kind of how the whole food chain works in this specific uh, set of organisms. That is very much different from a food web which is basically a collection of food chains and showing how they all interact within an ecosystem. So something like this, where you have a bunch of different arrows. Uh, the arrows actually represent the direction that the energy flows. So um, if you look at the grass down at the bottom left, it has a lot of arrows towards uh, all of the stuff that uh, it gets eaten by. So the grasshopper, the deer, and everything like that. So another picture of a, of a food web here. Uh, what you have to know is that organisms are going to depend on each other for survival. Uh, so if you take something out of that food web, uh, everything's going to shift in a, a very meaningful way. So just think about to yourself, uh, what would happen if you took out one or more of these organisms? Which organisms would thrive because of that? Which ones would suffer because of that? Good things to think about. So how does energy flow through an ecosystem? Well, it flows in one direction, of course. Okay, so what you have is you have the sunlight giving energy to plants, which gives energy to this cow, for example, which then gives its energy into a hamburger, which is eaten by a little boy, and he has the energy then to run because of that. So it all flows in one direction. It does not go uh, in multiple different directions. So this is different. How does matter flow through an ecosystem? Not energy, but matter. Uh, there are three different cycles. There's the carbon cycle, there's the water cycle, and then there's the nitrogen cycle. And we're gonna learn about all three of these in a later lesson. So your next key concept here is that pyramids model the distribution of energy and matter in an ecosystem. There are three main types of pyramids that we're gonna look at here. And here they are. They have the pyramid of energy, the pyramid of biomass, and the pyramid of numbers. All sounds very exciting, I know. But let's get right into it. So each pyramid is set up with trophic levels. That is, uh, the base is made up of the most organisms, followed by uh, the next, the primary consumers, secondary, tertiary, all the way to the top where there are, there are fewest organisms. So if we look at the pyramid of energy with this idea, the primary producers, if they have 100% of the energy, the amount of energy that gets passed uh, to the next level, it gets less and less each time. So the amount of energy decreases as you go up those trophic levels and as we go through the entire ecosystem. So that is according to the 10% rule. So an organism will use 90% of its energy for life processes and 10% of that energy gets passed to the next trophic level. 
So if you have, say, 10,000 kilocalories produced by those producers at the bottom, the grass and the, and the trees and everything, when the rabbit eats those, it's only going to get about 1,000 of those kilocalories. So that 10% rule gets passed on up. And you can see all the way up to the snake and the eagle, uh, only 10 calories for the eagle is from that original 10,000 of the producers as it goes up the chain there. So next we have the pyramid of biomass, and this is very much the same thing. Biomass is a measure of the total mass of organisms in a given area, and just the producers at the bottom, there's the mostly that on the earth. There's a whole bunch of uh, producers, and if we add their mass together, it's very large, all the way up to tertiary consumers, which are very uh, small compared to that. So it's really just mass. The, the producers are the most mass, and then tertiary least. Pyramid of numbers, just like it sounds, this is the number of individual organisms at each trophic level. So there are lots and lots and lots of different kinds of producers, lots of plants. Uh, there's fewer primary consumers, even fewer secondary, and even fewer tertiary consumers. Um, that's how a pyramid works. So hope you understood this. Good luck studying.